Well, good morning, peeps. Congratulations. You made it to the PM Hour. It's time for Studio STL. I'm Timmy Zelflin in for Chelsea Haynes, and we are talking history with celebrity historian Rafi. And Rafi, Rafi we're talking about some of our favorite subjects. Ice cream. Ice especially cream. here in St. Louis. <laughs> Rafi Andonian joining us right now. Yeah, especially in St. Louis. Rich history. All right, so let's, let's cut right to the chase. Who invented ice cream? <laughs> well, there's a lot of mythology around the sort of who invented ice cream, right? right? It's not one point that is pinpointed. Sure. Marco Polo sometimes gets t tribute, sometimes it goes back to ancient China. The reality is that like all these things are kind of true, but they're kind of false. So you have it in ancient China, you have it in ancient Mesopotamia, you have ice, or, or I should say versions of ice treats, you know okay, what I mean? That okay contribute to what we see as ice cream. You have it in, in uh, ancient Greece, you have it in Persia, you have it in Turkey. All these places for thousands of years and centuries were making some form of frozen treats, discovered the impact of salt on ice, which is part of the process of making ice cream. And that's how you sort of have it come into Western Europe, in France, in England, in Spain, more recently, in the last 500 yeah. years or so, compared to that, and eventually make its way across the Atlantic to the United States. There you go, gelato as well. All, yes, different, so all kind of the different versions of it, that's right. Custard, you name it, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, St. Louis does have some history, though, with ice cream, doesn't it? It does. So I brought actually some local St. Louis ice cream because I thought it'd be fitting. So here we have from Cafe de Blair local flavors. Now these are yeah. on 4th Street in downtown. So we got gooey butter cake because, come on, that's St. Louis, right? Love it. And Love of it. course, I brought s'mores because it's summer. And Gotta I brought have black it. walnut because that's local to this area as well. So I thought yeah. it'd be a nice touch. Here we Love have. It. These three from Bailey's, who also makes their own ice cream. And here I got vanilla, uh, chocolate, and mint chip, which are, of course, popular treats, right? So you're going to have to try some. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to try some of this, right? <laughs> I'm going in right but now. The story is St. Louis ice cream. Now, of course, the ice cream cone has some of its roots here. It's popularized here. It's not invented right. here in St. Louis, but it does exist before that. But it helps get popular with the St. Louis World Fair. But what I think is really fascinating is the Sunday. We see in the 1979, there was a record of more than 8,000 pounds in Massachusetts for the largest Sunday in world history. Whoa. Well, St. Louis didn't like that, so a bunch of folks got together in 1979, spent all summer weeks preparing so that they could set the world record, and they set it with a 9,616-pound ice cream sundae. You, got, you won't believe this. It took them weeks to prepare, weeks of training on how to stack it so it doesn't collapse, to have to find a giant bowl to put it in, a giant be hard spoon to, to be using. And they had a festival when they finally did it over the course of three days, nine blocks is how big that festival was. They had contests like milking cows. They had contests for <laughs> omelets made with ice cream. Because cool. the ice cream because of a sort of extravaganza in St. Louis. And they did set the world record. In 1981, it made it into record books. Did it ever get broken? It did get broken two years later. <laughs> two Just years later. two years. <laughs> we got to hold it long. All right, so we got to try it again. We got to organize it all get, summer long. You ready? There's I, a St. Louis sculptor that was behind start it. Start the campaign right now. Let's break for the biggest <laughs> Sunday. Uh, so, it's, so it's completely myth that the, the, what we hear of the cone being somebody who's making waffles. It's not waffles. completely myth. It's not completely myth. What it is is that, you know, it's all around the same time period. So in gotcha. the late 19th century, you have a patent for making the ice cream cone. Yeah. And in the World's Fair is, is actually you have that same vendor who came from Wall Street in New York right. here to St. Louis. And then it spreads over to a vendor here who also supports him in putting out those waffle cones. So that's part the World's Fair is a kind of a place for exposure and, and kind of popularizes it. So yeah. it's not completely myth, but it's not true that exactly. it got invented here. It's kind of elements of truth but not entirely which is often the case with common stories mm. i know exactly we got to try to mint chip that's we're gonna, be we're really gonna good enjoy one. some ice cream for a minute let you get caught up on your news headlines with amelia mcgavro Mag yeah. amelia we'll save you some okay no please do i love ice cream and now let's head back to tim Azell in studio stl with all that ice cream yep we're hanging out with our favorite celebrity historian <laughs> and rafi we're talking we've been talking ice ice cream and let's talk about how it got to the U.S. Sure, yeah, we looked locally in St. Louis. So step back and look yeah. over to the U.S. So what happens, of course, as I mentioned, in the way beginning across the Atlantic, the ice, ice cream comes with the colonists. But what's really neat and gets popularized in the U.S. is a couple of different places. It gets served actually in Maryland to the first lady in the 18th century. George Washington had an ice cream maker no at kidding. Mount Vernon where he lived. 
Yeah. But ultimately, it's Thomas Jefferson who does the most. See, he was a diplomat in France at one point in the 1780s. Yeah. And what happens is he brings that ice cream back, and he loves it, and he popularizes it. He served it in the White House when he was president many times. Wow. People refer to it being served in a crust with a pie, which we would call pie a la mode. Yep. So he, he loved it, but, you know, used it a lot, even in Monticello, where he lived. Well, from there, it became really popular across the U.S. Remember, he was president in the early 19th century. Sure. And throughout the 19th century, ice cream became ragingly popular, especially across the Midwest. This era of innovation, floats, sundaes, even milkshakes being promoted as health foods, actually, the milkshake. How about I, that for I, your morning smoothie? I, I'm all on. <laughs> so that's what happened over the course of the 19th century, thanks to Jefferson in the White House, serving it many times and making it popular after those early snippets that we saw. Hey, yeah, he's got all the rundown, the history of ice cream. Go explore it for yourself right here in St. Louis. Lots of places to do so. Thank That's you so right. much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thanks for having a cool history. Yeah, it's a very cool <laughs> history. And sweet. Hey, keep it right here. we got more coming your way at Studio STL.